Hello everyone. So today's topic is Kosh postulates and welcome to Microbial Concepts. So the full name of Robert Koch is Henrik uh, Hermann Robert Koch and he provided uh, remarkable contributions in the field of microbiology and that's why we study all his contributions in our first and second year itself. So he was a German general practitioner and a famous microbiologist. Okay, so he is uh, credited to be one of the founders for modern bacteriology. Okay, and as a founder, he had identified specific causative agents for TB, okay, cholera, and anthrax. And he gave some experimental supports for the concept of infectious disease, which include experiments on humans and animals. Okay, so for like experiments on observing whether after in inoculation, uh, the causative agent is able to reproduce the disease or not how to isolate it etc so for this he is also regarded as a pioneer of public health and for his work on tuberculosis he was also awarded the nobel prize in 1905 in physiology and medicine okay so what are the major major contributions of robert god so you may get a short note type of question on this so what all i have highlighted you can just focus on that particular or those particular points okay so he investigated the anthrax disease cycle okay he investigated he studied the whole anthrax cycle and he also discovered the bacteria of anthrax then the bacteria of tuberculosis and cholera okay the years are given respectively coach observed the phenomena of acquired immunity okay so we acquire immunity over the period of time and that is what he observed at that time so he introduced solid media for culture of bacteria by using agar as base so he is the one who uh, started using agar as base and he developed the pore plate method and was able to use the solid culture media for culture of bacteria coach also developed media suitable for growing bacteria which are isolated from human body okay how he observed what is the uh, what are the similarities uh, in human body and the bacteria or the bacterial needs and he started using uh, some body fluids or blood for example blood and other nutrients that are necessary for that that particular bacterial growth okay the result was the development of nutrient broth and nutrient agar media that are still in widely in wide use today he described hanging drop method for testing motility that is also we use nowadays and introduced staining technique by using aniline dye. Okay, that is also what we study. He invented the hot air oven and steam sterilizer and also introduced the methods to find out the efficacy of antiseptics. Okay, then about the actual experiment from which he gave the postulates. So in this experiment, uh, Koch uh, injected healthy mice with a material from deceased animal. Okay, say or assume that body fluid like blood was uh, injected and the mice became ill. Okay, so this was the first simple observation. So after transferring the um, bacteria that is the anthrax by inoculation through a series of 20 mice means he did the serial inoculation in 20 mice and he incubated a piece of spleen containing that particular anthrax bacillus in beef serum. Okay, so the bacilli grew, reproduce and produced spores on incubation. And when the isolated bacilli or spores were again injected to a mice, anthrax developed. Okay, so even through the serial uh, passage or uh, serial passage or from serial inoculation the infectivity or the pathogenicity of the anthrax bacteria did not reduce the bacteria was still able to reproduce and develop disease that's what he observed so during course study on bacterial disease it became necessary to isolate suspected bacterial pathogen so his criteria for proving the causal relationship between a microorganism and a specific disease is what is known as Koch postulates. Okay, so the experiment is again explained here. So we will see the 
first case of healthy animal so healthy animal if you uh, observe blood sample under microscope you will only get to or get to see or get to observe red blood cells okay and if you culture that sample then you will see no pathogen present but when a diseased animal is uh, a sample is taken from it and if you observe under microscope you will see some suspected pathogens okay with red blood cells if you culture that on a culture medium you will see uh, there there is a growth of a particular bacteria okay and again if that particular culture is inoculated then the animal dies okay again from that particular animal you will observe the same suspected pathogen okay and this is how the cycle continues now what were the observations the microorganism must be found in abundance in all organisms suffering from the disease but should not be present in a healthy organism the microorganism must be isolated from a disease organism and can or it should be able to grow and get a pure, we should be able to grow and get a pure culture the cultured microorganism should cause disease when introduced into another healthy organism okay the microorganisms must be re isolated from the inoculated disease experiment to a sorry inoculated diseased experimental host and identified as being identical to the original species of causative agent okay again i will read this point the microorganism must be re isolated from inoculated diseased experimental host okay which means by using the first animal diseased animals you get the sample or you get a um, body fluid sample as a inoculation or inoculant to be administered in another experimental host and in same in the another experimental host also same identical causative agent of the original specific pathogen should be observed okay then what are the four core postulates so evidence required to establish the etiological relationship between microorganism and disease are given as microorganism must be observed in every case of disease it must be isolated and grown in pure culture the pure culture when inoculated in another animals must reproduce the disease and microorganisms must be recovered from the disease animal again okay now there are also some limitations to these postulates and what are those so at that time when course postulates were given viruses were not yet able to be cultured okay and thus while it appeared that an infectious agent was responsible for certain disease but the lack of available technique to isolate and culture viruses meant that not all course postulates could be met the third postulate stipulates that the experimental host should exhibit disease okay the word is should not must and this is because of asymptomatic carriers the immunity if that particular um, experimental host has then it may not show the uh, development of disease okay because of the immunity so the word is used should and not must okay because of asymptomatic carriers immunity genetic resistance etc coast postulates do not count for prion diseases and other agents that cannot be grown in culture okay we cannot apply these to prion diseases most of the human bacterial pathogens they satisfy coast postulates except for those there are exceptions here like mycobacterium leprae and treponema palladium mycobacterium leprae causes leprosy and uh, sorry leprosy and treponema palladium causes syphilis okay and both these bacteria are yet to be grown in cell free culture medium so these are the limitations so if you get a question on write a short note on coast postulate describe the experiment uh, how he came to the uh, to the conclusion and giving the postulates okay which means the observations and then also write these four limitations okay so i hope you like this video do share this videos with your friends and do subscribe to my channel and keep supporting thank you